Hello, I'm Brendan Donnelly. I'm the director of the Federal Trust. And today I'll be discussing with the chair of the Federal Trust, John Stevens, um, recent events in British politics and particularly uh, the success of Liz Truss in winning the, co the contest within the Conservative Party to become the leader of the party and prime minister. There have been a lot of there's been a lot of comment uh, about a small number of people who voted in this election and suggestions that they might not be representative of the electorate as a whole. But I'd like to ask John first, um, how do you think it came about that uh, Liz Trust won this um, contest? Um, after all, in many ways, she's a rather unlikely leader of the Conservative Party, a former Liberal Democrat and certainly a former Remainer. Um, how did we get to where we are, John? Well, I think it was partly because the uh, alternatives were so unprepossessing in a range of ways. Um, and in particular, I think Rishi Sunak was perceived as just being too exotic and too rich and um, too, therefore, uh, divorced from the underlying realities, particularly the Red Wall, um, to be really electable. Um, but I think also the fact that the other candidates in the race um, at the MP stage all had particular problems um, from the point of view both of the members and of the wider membership. But I think one aspect of her success which has been underrated is precisely the fact that she was formerly a Remainer because that makes her a very valuable commodity at the moment in conservative circles, namely a convert to Brexit. And as opinion polls increasingly show that people are seeing Brexit as an absolutely enormous error, um, that uh, is a real problem for the Conservatives. Their fate is now tied entirely to the success or failure of Brexit. And if the current trend in opinion against Brexit continues, then that is doom, not just for this Conservative government, but for conservatism in Britain altogether. We can talk about Brexit and Northern Ireland Protocol in particular, perhaps a bit later. But, but what are the other um, immediate problems facing Liz Truss? Um, does she have any strategy for dealing with them? In particular, does she have a strategy for dealing with the, um, the rise, the extraordinary rise in energy prices in the United Kingdom? Well, she does have a strategy, um, which is to spend an enormous amount of money. And um, how enormous this is going to be remains to be seen, because although we're looking at estimates now of uh, the package that has been trailed um, in the financial press of around 90 to 100 billion pounds. This is only to um, support uh, households under strain. It doesn't really um, address at all the, in some respects, much more serious problems that industry is going to face through this energy cri crisis, um, particularly industries that are of strategic significance um, in metallurgy and cement and things like that, which are very high energy users. Uh, so, I, I mean, all we know is that she proposes to spend a very great deal of money and she proposes to uh, fund that through borrowing, um, which in itself will have significant implications uh, for interest rates and for the currency. Um, but to describe this as a, uh, as a coherent or even a complete plan uh, seems to me to be wider than mark. Um, but there's some suggestion that um, this strategy might be so far wide of the mark that it might lead to social unrest, that it might lead to to social contestation. Um, do, do you share these um, the, the black predictions? Well, I don't know about that. I think the problem is more whether this balancing act that she is trying to do, which is to load the burden of helping households um, onto future taxpayers and to ignore the problems that uh, industry is likely to have um, is a very toxic combination for the 
wider economy in anything other than the very short term. I mean, she is hoping that um, the markets will allow her to get away with this. Um, but I think that is um, far from certain. And clearly a crash in the financial markets could then precipitate all sorts of other problems um, for the housing market and for uh, for therefore standards of living generally. But and what she is endeavouring to do is to put off um, such tensions by taking a gamble with the confidence of the financial markets. And we have to see whether that gamble works. What's your prediction? Well, I think a lot depends, obviously, on the, the global economic conditions. Um, if the war in Ukraine continues and the squeeze on energy prices continues, then that risk will be great. If, however, there is some prospect of uh, the war ending or there being some uh, compromise or Putin falls or... Um, uh, there is a more benign outcome in the U.S. economy and things. I and mean, there are a range of factors, uh, China too, obviously. Um, it, it, she is absolutely putting us at the mercy of global events. She's not in control of this situation at all. She's taking a punt um, and she is hoping she is going to be lucky. Um, but it is one hell of a punt. She is betting the ranch here. Mm. She's spoken very much uh, of herself as being in the model of, of Baroness Thatcher, laying a great deal of emphasis on, on, on tax cuts. Um, do, do you think that, um, uh, that this is the end of the One Nation Conservative Party? Uh, what Liz Truss had to say about there being too much concern with egalitarianism in British society and in British financial structures, um, and there should be more uh, reward for the people at the top, the richest people, that, that sits very ill with a, a certain tradition of, of con recent conservatism, the one nation conservatism. Um, do, do you see this as being a, a significant caesura, uh, a break in the tradition? Well, her rhetoric has certainly been very hard boiled and she felt that necessary, obviously, to get elected. Um, but the reality is that she is going to be spending money um, in um, the most statist manner imaginable. Um, and I, this, the caesura is really between what she is saying and what she is actually going to end up having to do. Um, because there is absolutely no way in which this current crisis can be uh, avoided um, or mitigated um, without spending very large amounts of money. Uh, the question is how those are financed. Now, her, her right-wing credentials rest essentially on her wanting to do this through borrowing. I'm not entirely sure that, that loading up on subsequent generations, uh, the costs of, of, of uh, what she is undertaking is, is necessarily a very right-wing thing to do. Um, and her hope is, of course, that lower taxes will uh, attract investment. That's the theory. Um, and will um, lead to a quicker return to growth. But again, that is... Uh, not at all established and, and would not necessarily be advocated from a strictly free market position either. I, what one really sees here is confusion, I think, more than anything else. Yes. Um, how long is she going to be leader of the Conservative Party? Will she survive to the next election? When will that be? Well, I think the probability is that she will tr be forced to go the full course. I think um, an election before the end of 2024, autumn of 2024, and maybe even you know, going the full length as John Major was constrained to do, um, and have an election in January 2025 is, is not to be excluded, because I, I think she's going to need all the time she can get. The only thing that would change that was if a crisis really did hit, a combination of a, a sterling crisis, a, a guilt strike, and maybe a constitutional crisis, either in Ireland or, or in Scotland, um, that could um, be so great as to precipitate uh, 
an early election. But I mean, that is a a crisis of, of of very very large proportions indeed that would require her to uh, relinquish the the advantages of a of an eighty seat majority. Yeah, but will she be able? Do you think when this general election comes, given at least the rhetoric we've heard from her, which we've drawn attention to, will she be able to to retain the the, the red wall element of the new conservative coalition? Yeah, many people in the red wall actually would would not greatly benefit from uh, from uh, tax cuts, um, but do disbenefit are put at a disadvantage uh, by pressure on 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 services notably the NHS. How do you see that playing out? Well, I think that uh, she is calculating that the help that she is focusing on households uh, and therefore not on industry um, will be sufficient um, to prop up her support in the Red Wall through this current energy crisis. Um, What she does uh, for the NHS um, is I think a longer term uh, question, and and we've not yet seen what measures um, the, her government will propose for that. But the real problem for the Red Wall, I think, is the issue of immigration, which has gone down the agenda as issues of cost of living have become more important. But nevertheless, there is a point that. Um, a large number of people in the Red Wall did vote for Brexit and on the basis of controlling immigration, and that has clearly failed. Um, And the question is whether that becomes an issue again or not. Uh, But if we are entering economically straightened times, what normally happens is that immigration does become an issue again. And... I think she has no answer to that, particularly since uh, Brexit has actually uh, changed the whole pattern of this. It it raised a whole lot of expectations that could not conceivably be fulfilled and did so in potentially a very dangerous way. A lot of people have pointed out that uh, in the cabinet, in Truss's cabinet and among her prominent supporters, are many representatives of the ERG, the European Research Group. Uh, How dependent um, for her support and her longevity as prime minister uh, will she be on this group? Uh, Particularly, do you attach any significance to Jacob Rees-Mogg's elevation to um, business and environmental secretary? Uh, Does that mark an end of any sort of green credentials for the Conservative Party in government? He's known to be a a, a climate change sceptic. Well, I think he ticks two boxes. Um, He was a Johnson loyalist. And Trust did, I think, benefit from the fact that she was seen to be the the candidate favoured by Boris Johnson, only because Johnson uh, regarded Sunak as... Uh, the traitor who who brought him down. Um, and so that's one reason why, why Rees Mogg is there. But he also represents, uh, you're right, uh, a view that was held against Boris Johnson, that he was too green and too um, open to uh, the uh, climate issue and the energy transition. And I think he will be seeking to uh greatly increase um own resources in the uk of of fossil fuels i think fracking will be definitely on the agenda and obviously it's already been announced um increasing the production of of north sea oil and gas the only slight problem with that is that um that plays straight into the hands of the snp uh scotland's power over england in the energy field has been massively increased by this crisis um, and will also indeed be increased by um, any transition to alternative energies. But Scotland is not only um, an energy uh, source, a very important one, um, of fossil fuels, but also has huge um, alternative energy potential. And what the politics of that proves to be uh, remains to be seen. 
I mean, for example, uh, the Truss's refusal to have a windfall tax on uh, oil and gas production um, might be met in Scotland by saying, well, why can't we have a tax on Scottish production when it goes to Scotland? Yeah. Uh, it's a, a sign of um, how pressing the energy question is um, that uh, people, when they consider the, the coming um, pre preliminary days, early days of Truss's uh, premiership, um, that they don't talk other than secondarily about Europe, because um, I think um, uh, three or four months ago, many people would have thought that um, Truss's uh, elevation to the premiership uh, would have enormous implications for United Kingdom's relationship with the European Union, and particularly for the Northern Ireland Protocol. Now, those considerations haven't gone away. Um, what do you think um, uh, is going to be the, the outcome? We, we read in the, um, in the uh, Financial Times um, that Truss initially um, wants to um, dial down the, the rhetoric and the difficulties with the European Union and particularly on the, the, the Northern Ireland Protocol. Um, how long do you think that's going to last? Will the ERG be prepared to, to accept that? Um, will the government, will Truss's government, be deterred from uh, perhaps uh, adopting as aggressive an attitude on this matter as it might wish have wished um, by the, the, the economic problems um, that we've been discussing? Well, I think the current crisis and the war in Ukraine and things creates circumstances in which these difficult issues can be postponed, um, both on the part of the EU and, and on the part of the British government. And I think what Trust would like to achieve is that this issue rolls on without becoming critical, without certainly precipitating sanctions from the EU. Um, but remains live so that it can be fired up in time for a fairly aggressively anti-European tone in any general election uh, to preserve as much as possible of the coalition that Boris Johnson put together in 2019. Uh, the problem is that, as we discussed earlier, the chances are that this um, election cannot really be uh, until very late. Um, and whether the Northern Irish situation can be kept going um, in its current um, stasis um, until the end of 2024, I doubt very much. I didn't think that um, the Europeans would tolerate that. I can't see Irish politics tolerating that, particularly since there might be a general election in, in, in the Republic uh, before then. Um, and... Uh, I, I think the situation in Northern Ireland, um, the, the position of the DUP and the position of the Stormont administration uh, won't allow that. So, but at the moment, um, you know, she's got plenty of other things on her plate, and this is something which can be um, postponed for the time being. That's, that's true, of course, of the Northern Ireland Protocol. Um, do, do we think that uh, there are wider implications for the relationship between the United Kingdom and the EU of, of Truss's premiership, or, or is it all subsumed under the question of the Northern Ireland Protocol? Well, I think the main thing to realise is that from the point of view of the EU, Britain is increasingly marginal, um, and the issues related with Brexit are increasingly marginal. Uh, I mean, clearly, Ireland is a very sensitive issue and, and has... Um, difficult consequences, potentially. Um, but those consequences would actually be relevant for Scotland and its aspirations. Um, the EU has got plenty of much, much bigger issues that it is seeking to uh, wrestle with at the moment. The energy one, obviously. Um, the uh, challenge of Putin's Russia um, more defence spending, a major rearmament program, particularly by Germany, um, the funding of uh, the energy transition, which is going to lead to uh, deeper integration of the eurozone, more fiscal union. Um, all of these things are, are are enormous questions, and 
the UK is frankly completely marginal for this and um, is a distraction, if anything. If that's true of the European Union, how, how do you think um, uh, Truss's premiership will, um, will impact uh, on views of the United Kingdom outside Europe, um, America, China, um, uh, the Middle East? Um, do you think that um, the United Kingdom's standing in the world will be increased, diminished or not affected at all by her premiership? I think it could be affected very negatively if the economic crisis is severe. I mean, if we have a uh, a serious currency crisis or guilt strike or um, I think a lot of um, long-standing issues with uh, the British economy um, will be brought sharply into focus and and, and could lead to a, a very significant downgrading of global perceptions of the UK. Um, and of course there is also the constitutional dimension. I think uh, an ongoing crisis in Northern Ireland, and in particular, any serious move towards or prospect of a move towards Scottish independence would, would also transform the view of, of um, England in, uh, in the world. So um, she is traveling along a very dangerous road here. Um, and it is much easier to see the downside than it is to see the upside at the moment. Well, these are issues that uh, that will unroll and unfold over the coming months, and no doubt we'll be discussing them again. Um, thank you very much indeed, John. Uh, the Federal Trust will continue to keep an eye on these issues, um, and we hope that um, those of you who've watched this podcast will be able to watch our future podcasts and perhaps go to our archive um, our, on our website. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this latest video. It's one of a series of videos about Europe, about Brexit, and about the future of the European Union uh, from the Federal Trust. Uh, I would hope that you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel, and then you'll have notifications of future videos, which I hope you'll enjoy uh, as much as perhaps you enjoyed this one.